So what you get today is me ranting for 20 minutes about something that I care very deeply about, which is metric perversity and the incredibly bad decisions that it makes everybody make. Like people make bad decisions about security, privacy, trust and safety because they don't care, because they don't know they should care and they don't know what to care about. But the thing that I see people make bad decisions about this more than anything, it's because they have bad metrics. Now, I've seen a lot of bad decisions. I was the CISO of Twitter. Uh, I was the global lead of privacy technology at Google. I came in to help clean up Zoom after they had their problems a little couple of years ago. I've seen people make a lot of very bad decisions. That's sometimes why people hire me. I've also seen people make really good decisions. So I want to help you make better decisions. So we're going to talk about metrics. What is a metric? A metric is a quantifiable measurement to figure out whether you're doing well or not at a particular thing. A goal metric is something that tells you whether you're meeting your goals. So are, do you have a bunch of users? Are they happy? Are you making money? Things like that. A program metric tells you whether you are making progress on your planned work. Are people annotating their data sets? Are people writing the code they're supposed to write? Are you meeting your program goals? I am only talking about goal metrics today, uh, not about program metrics. So one example, MDAO. You know, for those of you who know anything about Twitter, MDAO is the average number of people where uh, they're showing up and doing something that could potentially cause them to see an ad. Now, it's a little complicated to measure. Uh, this caused a bunch of people to start suing each other, but it is mostly aimed at investors. And what do investors care about? How much money they're making, right? So does this number kind of like correlate? You can kind of see, I, you can actually see, I pulled this off of the Twitter investor site. You can see who this is aimed at, but they kind of correlate with each other. So this MDAO measurement is a pretty good metric. So let's talk about the bad ones. What is a perverse metric? A perverse metric is one that doesn't actually tell you what you think it's telling you. And then that causes you to make bad decisions about it, right? Making data-driven decisions is in fact great. Humans do not have the IO or the processing capacity to work with the complexity of the world. We use heuristics. We use implicit biases. We overlook the unexpected. Humans often overlook bad news. They just don't want to grapple with it. Now, I know that's a little less common in this room because we all chose to work in the field of, oh no, terrible things, but even we will do it, right? Now this especially often impacts security, privacy, and trust and safety. We have adversaries, we have unknowns, we have little tiny risks, lots and lots of them that have critical impacts. So it's very, very hard for us to have good metrics. So we're gonna go through all the different kinds of bad metrics. And then we are going to go through how to avoid it. The first kind of bad metric that people will show up with a lot is a metric that measures effort, not result. If you are somebody's C-level executive or you're their board, they really want to tell you how hard they're working. And that's very legitimate. But unfortunately, effort and result, not the same thing even vaguely, right? So I'm going to show you a real example. These, so these are all real world actual companies that I have worked at examples and I'm not gonna name any of the companies. But there was a company level goal that some of you are giggling about now where it was, we're gonna send N notifications this quarter for a very, very large value of N. Great, if you ever set one of those goals around me, let me tell you, I could hit that goal tomorrow. You are gonna be extremely sad about it though because if you set a goal like that, I will make sure that every single one of those notifications melts your phone into the ground so that you know never, ever, ever to set a metric like that again. Second one, just because you can measure something doesn't actually mean it's important. People pay so much attention to metrics. This is actually part of the power of metrics, right? They go and they want to change them and they pay attention to them. But sometimes that's really bad. So there was a team that I took over management of a while ago, and uh, they were told that they were slowing down launches too much. They were reviewing launches before they happened. And they were like, okay, well, how do we not piss everybody off? We're going to, we're gonna get things moving a lot faster. Okay, 
So they're going to measure from when somebody files for a review until that review starts. And I'm going to defend this metric before I make fun of it, okay? So it is really hard to measure how long a launch review takes. It can take months of very close collaboration. Sometimes a launch really should be slowed down because that is not a good launch. Sometimes uh, teams that want to launch things, they're like, I would want to launch this thing. And you're like, what do you want to launch? And they're like, I don't know. I didn't write it in the document. Or they don't answer questions. So this team is trying to minimize the time to first response on tickets. So the very predictable thing immediately happened, which is the members of that team started responding to review tickets with, hello, thank you for filing a review ticket. We will respond to your ticket in the order in which it was filed. Thank you for choosing to have a review before you launch. So this did not actually piss off the rest of the company any less. Shocking. Um, but the first re response to those tickets, it was so fast. It was so useless and so fast. So when I took over that team, you know what we did? We stopped measuring, literally, just stopped measuring. And you know what? People got less pissed off at us. Now, we did a lot of other things in, in parallel, but I want to emphasize this, not measuring just not measuring, led us to better results. You need to use metrics to direct attention where you want it. Using a gauge as a lever, OK. Gauges indicate that a system is working well, but it does it indirectly. And you use these because it is often impossible to measure things in practice without a gap. It is creepy, illegal, and impossible to reach directly into the brains of every one of your users and say, are you happy with us? Do you want to use our product again? Even if that's what you want to know. Um, if you are the social sort of person and you go to parties, I hear a rumor that like social interaction happens there and like people talk, maybe there's music, maybe there's dancing. And then the more interaction there is, the more noise there is. So you might go, ah, how much noise there is at a party tells me whether it's a good party or not. But if I believe that, then the party with a grenade on the table, definitely the best party, right? Okay, but a real world example. I worked on a social product. I've worked on a number of them, I'm not gonna tell you which. They really wanted to increase the number of connections between users of that product. And that's because in order to do social things, usually people have to like connect to each other, right? But not all connections are good. And so when those product managers said, we are going to make more connections happen, they made a lot of bad connections happen. We actually went back and looked later, and there were a bunch of men of various ages who were really focused on connecting with some young women. And you know what? Those were not good interactions. And that is the sort of thing that happens when you use a gauge as a lever. It was bad for the product. It was bad for users. So try not to use a gauge as a lever. Your adversaries also don't help you measure. Adversaries are tautologically adversarial. Um, maybe you want to stop them, though. So you're like, OK, I'm going to use machine learning. I'm going to put all my data in there, and I'm going to find the anomalies. I'm going to stop them. And the first thing that happens when you try this is you get a bunch of alerts out, and the poor team that has to deal with the alerts is like, what is this crap? I don't know what to do with any of this. This isn't actually bad behavior. Or I don't know what to do with this alert. So what people do is they start measuring those alerts that are coming out. Are they actually useful? And you know how much security software people try to sell you with that metric? So much. And here's the thing. It doesn't help you, because what happens is what they're not telling you is how much bad behavior they're not detecting. And you know what? The adversaries, they don't want to be detected, so they're super cool with this. They're not going to make it easy for you. Uh, by the way, privacy people don't get smug, because privacy tech does the same thing, but worse. So if you're running a security program or a privacy program, one of the real life places you run into this is incident vulnerability statistics. And it drives me up the wall that people say, I want to drive down my incident and vulnerability statistics. Now, on one level, yes, those are bad things. I would like them to go away. On a more important level, they are very high variance. They're very noisy. And they are often driven in part by, large part, by employee and external reports, right? I really need people to actually respond. I need people to tell me when something's gone wrong. Because the easiest way to drive down your stats is to discourage people from reporting. And this is what actually happens. People are like, 
product team, why do you have so many incident reports? It's because they're paying attention and telling you. The easiest way to make their numbers go down is just to not tell you anymore. So your metrics can only be as good as your data, even if that data is manipulated. <sighs> okay, a small number times a big number is a useless number. Estimates are estimates, tautologically, and they have uncertainty. Many of the estimates that we use in security, privacy, trust, and safety, and so forth, have so much e uncertainty that they are, in fact, useless. So let me give you an example. One of the things that I get asked for is things like, well, how much risk are we taking by making that vulnerability fix take longer? Like, what if we delay it? Okay, expected value, probability times, times impact, right? Okay, uh, so I wanna figure out the probability, the risk of exploitation. Let's take into account all of our different layers of protection and how they interact. What is the ad adversary doing? Did they take a vacation? Are they looking at the company next door? Did everybody start looking at this vulnerability right now? I don't know, it is a definitely an, ex uh, an estimate. The impact of the exploitation, okay. We need to take into account the direct breakage, the indirect breakage, uh, kicking out the attackers, keeping them out, emergency fixes, fixes on other vulns, upgrades, consultants, lawyers, potential regulatory inquiries, FTC consent decrees, change practices in the future, and, oh yeah, user and customer trust. This is an estimate, right? This is an estimate with a huge amount of variance on it. And then, because statistics, when you multiply one thing with a lot of uncertainty by another thing with a lot of uncertainty, you get something with even more uncertainty. And there is so much uncertainty that that number is useless. One of the ways that we find this a lot is we look at that number and we're like, oh, it's larger than the market capitalization of the company. Everybody should just stop everything they're doing and only work on this vulnerability. Now, sometimes that is the case, but it, often it isn't. And sometimes we end up with this little tiny number and we're like, oh, I can put that on my corporate credit card. I'm just gonna ignore this. It seems weird. It seems like a really bad vuln, right? And sometimes you end up with a number that looks super reasonable and you're like, oh, great. A real number. No, no, that's a coincidence. That's not a real number. There is so much uncertainty that that number is useless. So you need to watch your uncertainty. You also didn't think to measure the black swans. You can only measure the things that you think to measure, and you can't measure all of them because otherwise your log system is way bigger than your actual system. A black swan is an unanticipated event with major impact. So in security, we often think of things like meltdown and specter where all of the processors are full of bad, bad bugs, and it's really hard to fix them, and everybody's owned, and it's really, really, really hard to mitigate the problem. Here's the thing. We have a lot of studies about black swan events. They show up more often and have more impact you, than you'd think. This is very consistent across a lot of fields. And measuring black swans has all of the problems of measuring the impacts of unlikely risks in general, like we just discussed, but it also has this problem that you are specifically trying to measure things that you don't know about. So here's the thing. You do not know how wrong you are, but you know you're wrong. Okay, I'm not gonna make you sad all day. Let's talk about how to avoid this. Real techniques to do this. Okay, jerk genie. The jerk genie is my friend. They are all powerful. They are extremely literal and they are going to make your dreams come true. Do you wanna have good usage numbers? No problem, you've had a DDoS attack. Oh, oh, did you wanna get your project done? Done. Now, nobody uses your system, it doesn't solve any problems. And if you hadn't been focusing on your program metrics, you might have noticed that there was a way to solve the problem in half the time. They are going to make your metric dreams come true in the worst way possible. You should be thinking about how they are going to mess up every single metric you have, every single project goal you have. I promise you this will make you make better choices about what you work on. Uh, people who have worked with me can in fact vouch for this. Uh, another technique you can use is guard metrics. Sometimes you need to use a perverse metric, like it is not actually possible to not use a gauge. You can't measure the thing you really want, short of installing electrodes in people's brains or something. So what you do is you set up a guard. So for example, Okay, I want to know something about my usage numbers. There's some perversity in there, but we're going to go and check a little sample of the traffic and see if it's good, that it's not spam, that it's not hate, and that it's not harassment, that it's not a DDoS. If we can keep that number of bad traffic down, 
then we have some really good assurance of a good statistical sample. We have some really good assurance that the overall number is reasonable. Uh, there's another team that I worked with where the perversity that they were worried about is they were worried they were going to launch features that caused their usage numbers to spike in the short term but not the long term because they were just annoying their core users. So what they did is they said, we refuse to launch anything unless our users love it. And they had a way of measuring that and they refused to launch anything without it. Wrong metrics are worse than no metrics. This is not me giving permission to tell your C-level execs, this is not me permission, giving you permission to tell your board, oh, I refuse to give you any numbers, okay? <laughs> but this is me giving you permission to tell them, I don't care that you want that number, that number is not something that we can measure, math says no. And you should tell them that we don't have a way to estimate that. The uncertainty is not uh, gonna make it okay. Or, and to keep in mind that if your data can be manipulated, so can your metrics. You should also be opinionated. Every single time you put out a metric, actually every single time you put out a communication, you should say, what do I want somebody to do when they see that thing? And don't tell me you want them to know something that doesn't count. You want them to do something. So for example, this is very, very important for dashboards. Here is my dashboard. You can see it, right? It's um, my dashboard uh, vulnerabilities. And somebody should be looking at that dashboard and going, oh God, I gotta fix a thing. I need to fix a thing. Oh, look, a list of things that I need to fix, right? I want them to, cause, to be caused to do something. And I'm gonna give you a good metric example, okay? It's really important for a lot of products to say um, that they are solving products for their users really quickly. So one metric we use for that is called time to satisfaction, where you say, okay, somebody is, has showed up on my site and I want to measure how long it is until they have completed their task. Okay, cool. Um, sometimes you can really tell where that is because you know what a task completion looks like. Sometimes it's a, oh, okay, they left my site, they're done with their task. Well, is that a good metric? Let's test it against our techniques. First off, our friend the jerk genie says, yes, I can make your metric look amazing. I'm gonna put up an error page. Also, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be filled with offensive words and it'll just cause people to show up and leave very, very quickly. Your number's gonna look amazing. Okay, so do you need guard metrics? Yes, yes you do, you need guard metrics, right? We can do things like use UX research, uh, use panels, things like that to make sure that people aren't being chased off. We can also use the things that we learned through that UX research to make our actual measurement better. We can, but we can put reasonable guard metrics in place. Are those metrics wrong? It's actually unlikely. Uh, these are pretty hard to manipulate as a, as a metric and it has pretty low uncertainty. Should we care about this metric? Actually, in a, lot of, in a lot of products, yeah, we should totally care about this metric. So this really can be an excellent if imperfect metric. So go forth. Build amazing things and measure them well. Make sure that the jerk genie is your friend and you're not going to have any more unfortunate surprises in your life than are strictly necessary. Thank you. <laughs>